It's on it. I, I know that uh, we had a lot of high profile deaths in Florida. Uh, that the number one state trooper on uh, I 95 lost his life uh, doing a drug interdiction stop. Uh, there were, were many, many shootouts in, in Miami and uh, police officers uh, lost their lives. Uh, then there are police officers that lose their lives that, that you never really know why they lost their life, uh, just that they were killed. And drugs are at the root of a lot of those. Uh, a classic example was a constable in Texas uh, made a stop and was killed with his own weapon. And we would have never known why he was killed with his own weapon and, and what happened except that he had left the video camera on in the uh, car and we found that he had discovered uh, using interrogation techniques that uh, they were carrying drugs in the trunk and when he went to inspect the drugs they, they jumped him and took his weapon and killed him. Wow. At what point in time did you change and decided even my political affiliation is not helping the situation. You decided to join the Libertarian Party. What? When did that crystallize in, in your mind? Well, I've been philosophically a Libertarian for a long time, but I have suffered uh, under the delusion that a lot of people that are philosophical Libertarians uh, that are in the Republican Party suffer under, that the, the Republican Party basically stands for the same principles as the Libertarians, but that we just need to reform the party. And I, uh, I became completely frustrated with that process and convinced that you would never reform the Republican Party. Never. Uh, it, it was, uh, the status quo defense mechanisms are just too great. So what year was that, that you, that crystallized that in your mind? That was this year. Uh, this was in January. I'm a recovering Republican and I've been rational for 147 days now. Um, when you made that decision, how did your wife and your friends feel about it? Did they know that you were switching parties? Well, my, my wife uh, knows the, the agony that I've gone through over several years uh, about what was going on with the Republican Party and the fact that you couldn't get any traction as to uh, changing things or, or reforming that party. and so. It was actually, I think, a sense of relief to her because I was a much happier person after I made that decision. And matter of fact, I could shave in the morning without uh, wondering about what I stood for. How about your friends in police work? You must belong to a retired police officers association. Did they ever ask you, what, what are you doing? Every single peer that I have uh, agrees with me privately that the war is, uh, it, uh, the agreement ranges from that the war is lost, they never win it, all the way to a vast majority just agree that we, we ought to be out of it and never should have been in it. How many people of your peers would you say, is that 20, 25? Uh, every chief that I engage in any conversation for any length of time come, uh, shares that same thing. They just can't do it publicly. Did you ever meet the former chief of Gary, Indiana, who said this 25 years ago that we ought to end the drug war? Yes, I did uh, actually meet the chief from, from Indiana, and he was considered a nut at the time uh, because of that position. And what do you think of the nut now? Uh, he was a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very interesting how nuts become prophets. It and, really is. Uh, and if, when you find people who know enough about the issue, um, they come out the same way you did. Um, what would you recommend for people who are still re still in the Republican Party, still, you know, hemming and hawing, thinking I don't want to waste my vote? What would you say to them? Well, first off, uh, wasting your vote is is to continue to do the same thing that you've always done that gets a bad result. Uh, even Einstein said that the very definition of insanity is to continue to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Every election cycle we elect either a Democrat or a Republican. And every election cycle things get worse. And for us, the voters, us, the citizens of this country, if we want to change, what we have to do is we have to change. We have to change what we're doing and how we're voting. 
And what are you personally going to do this election cycle? What are you doing to make that change? I am giving people an honest choice. Uh, I'm sticking with the issues that, that actually affect them. It's very difficult to go and talk to people about the Liberty Tree and, and to get any attention from them. But what you can do is you can talk about the fruits of liberty, and they do want to talk about that. And when you talk about the fruits of liberty to the average American, it sounds good. So you're running as a candidate for what district and what state? Uh, House District 20 in the state of Florida. And you're running as a Republican, Democrat, or Libertarian? I'm running as a Libertarian. Are you going to stick with the Libertarian I'm Party? I'm a Libertarian for life. Well, there you had it, people. My interview with retired Chief of Police Jerry Cameron, a very establishment-looking man. Uh, he's a recovering Republican, now a Libertarian for life, he says. You heard him? I didn't put any words in his mouth. Those were his own unrehearsed interview. A Chief of Police saying, in the drug war, we're making things worse. That's just what Honorable James P. Gray who you've seen on my show for almost a month prior to this, uh, Orange County judge saying, in the drug war. The reason they don't is because too many cops, too many sheriffs make lots of extra money in federal grants, and it creates more victims that need help, that go on welfare because their husband or their wife is now in prison. And the thing is a disaster. Libertarians are not asking people to everybody go out and do illegal drugs. We're just saying the drug war is making it worse. And I'm not going to bring up little Alberta Sepulveda murdered, in my opinion, by Officer Hahn in Modesto when they shot the little 11-year-old Latino boy in the back laying face down on his bedroom floor. That's part of the drug war. You kill little kids. But no, no. You know, there's lots of cops and sheriffs who want to go out there and let people get killed who are totally innocent. Well, there's a recovering Republican, Jerry uh, Cameron. Now, I want to go back to him and let you hear a little bit more of the interview with retired police chief Jerry Cameron. This year became a libertarian candidate in the 20th Assembly District of Florida. Back to Jerry. How do the people that you work with in law enforcement, sheriff's deputy, DEA agents, FBI, how do they respond to you now, privately or publicly? Well, of course, I, I don't have as much contact as I once had, but the ones that I were, were, uh, see on a, a frequent basis in any way whatsoever are very, very much in agreement that uh, this war on drugs is, 